Pacifow standard has become increasingly popular over the past 20 years, with thousands of properties worldwide designed using this energy efficient concept. What are the benefits to the homeowner? In this introduction, Tomás O'Leary of the Passive House Academy outlines the advantages and explains the key concepts as he shows us around his own Passive House. Later videos in this series will expand on these concepts in more detail. The Passive House Standard um, is the global leading energy efficiency standard. It was first developed by Professor Wolfgang Feist uh, in Frankfurt in Germany and in fact uh, Professor Wolfgang Feist built the first ever certified passive house. It's his own family home built in 1991 and since that time uh, tens of thousands of passive houses have been built all over the world um, mostly concentrated in continental Europe of course where it started off but uh, the concept now has spread as far as the United States uh, Ireland and the UK of course and also as far as China and even the Southern Hemisphere. So you might wonder what are the advantages of building a passive house or what benefits do they bring to the homeowner? Well the benefits of passive houses are, are many. Uh, the most obvious one is the dramatic reduction in energy required for heating. So a passive house will achieve about a 70 to 80 percent reduction on heating costs compared to conventional standards. The other advantage is that they provide very high level of comfort. So a passive house is built to provide 20 to 21 degrees, 24 hours a day in the house, 365 days a year, irrespective of how severe uh, the weather is. So we have low energy costs, we have very high comfort. And the other thing that passive houses are renowned for is the superior indoor air quality. Achieving the passive house standard requires very high quality workmanship on the part of the builders but also requires very good quality materials. These houses are extremely well put together and the components such as the windows, the ventilation system are all of the very highest quality. When you first start to think about building a new passive house, the very first thing you have to consider is where am I going to get the maximum amount of solar energy from? In the Northern Hemisphere, that's going to be from due south. So when we were designing this building, we were very conscious to, to try and orientate as many windows as we could uh, to the south. So we have this large window here, um, which is south facing. And the technology in that window is such that that window takes in more energy in a year than it lets out. So that window, in effect, is like a miniature boiler in terms of the overall energy balance of the house. Uh, in the winter time, when the sun is low in the sky, that window collects all the free solar energy and illuminates this whole space, therefore making a very significant contribution to the comfort and well-being in this house. Later in this series, we'll be going through the very detailed criteria that are used to define what a passive house is because it's very precisely defined by the Passive House Institute. There's a maximum threshold for space heating demand, for example. There's a maximum threshold for heat load. And we'll be looking at all these things in much greater detail as we go through this series. The best approach to designing a passive house is to adopt what we call a fabric first approach. And what we mean by that is building an extremely good building fabric to try and reduce the heat losses from the building. After that, at a later stage, we think about what kind of heating system we might like to have. So when we talk about a fabric first approach, we're talking about a really well insulated building, much, much more insulation than is normally required by the building regulations. And you'll see later in this series, the kind of depths and thicknesses of insulation that we like to use in a passive house. We also want to create an airtight envelope, so we don't have any drafts or any cold air infiltration into the building. We want to keep the warm air that's in the house contained in the house and to stop any cold air coming in. In a passive house, it's very important to eliminate what are called thermal bridges. And thermal bridges occur when you have part of the construction, such as this concrete wall here, passing down through the insulation layer into the cold earth below. We have to create a break between the inside and the outside and we'll see later in this series how we can use special construction materials to avoid these thermal bridges and to avoid heat loss from the inside to the outside of the house. 
In order to maintain comfort in our homes, it's very important that we strike a good balance between heat losses on the one hand and heat gains on the other hand. In normal construction, we have a, a phenomenal amount of heat losses due to poor insulation, poor windows and drafty construction. And because of all these significant heat losses, we need a very large heating system. So the principle in a passive house is to dramatically reduce all those heat losses to a point where your heating system then is only used as a backup. So if we have good insulation, good windows and an airtight construction, we've dramatically compressed all our heat losses. So in a nutshell, we have a reduced heating demand provided by this boiler, but we also have free energy from the sun and also free internal heat gains from household appliances and the like. All houses need some form of backup or auxiliary heating. So it's not strictly true to say that passive houses are no heating houses. In this case, the heating power required is about 10% of what it is in the normal house. So that's a very dramatic reduction. But that 10% that you do need is very important. So you have to have some source of heating. So in a passive house, you have a lot of choices that you can make regarding the heating system. In this particular house, we use wood pellets which is a natural product and also carbon neutral so it's something that we like very much but there's a lot of ranges of different possibilities that you can use for heating your house. In a traditional house in front of a window like this you would normally find a great big radiator and the radiator is used to compensate the cold air that's coming in from the window but in this passive house we have excellent triple glazed windows so we don't need any radiator underneath the window and in fact, in most passive houses, we don't have any radiators and we don't have any underfloor heating. The way we distribute the heat, the backup heating in the house, is through the ventilation system. So instead of having radiators, we use the ducts in the ventilation system to transport warm air around the house. Most people mightn't be familiar with a mechanical ventilation system and they may have some thoughts about, well, is it easy to maintain or operate? and uh, I'm going to show you now in fact that that's a very easy process uh, to do. There's only two things you need uh, to think about when you've got a mechanical ventilation system. The first um, is to change the filters every nine months or so. These filters take the dust and the particles out of the air as it's passing around the house and provides very nice clean indoor air quality and it's a matter of opening the door in the ventilation system, pulling this one out and putting a fresh one back in. So it's a very very simple operation the other thing you need to think about is the, the flow rate, the mechanical ventilation flow rate in your house and there are three settings typically on a ventilation equipment and we call these holiday, normal and party. What we mean by holiday is if you're leaving the house for a while, maybe for a week or a fortnight and you want to set back the flow rate, you just press this button here for the setback position. Uh, when you come back to your home then, you just press this normal setting, so that's uh, giving you the normal day-to-day -day flow rate and then if you have a lot of visitors to the house or you have a party in the house then you can press this button here which increases the flow rate and gives plenty of fresh air to the house. So we're supplying fresh air to all the living spaces but we also need to extract air from the passive house and rooms that are extracted are include the kitchen, the utility room and bathrooms such as this. So. We have this ventilation system which is taking the damp, humid air out of the house and which is contributing to very, very good indoor air quality. Any of the principles of passive house that are normally applied to new built houses can also be applied in retrofit situations. And later in 2011, the Passive House Institute will introduce a new standard for retrofitting existing building stock to the passive house standard. That standard is going to be called Enerfit and will include a slight relaxation on the very challenging criteria set for new build projects. And we'll talk about that later on in this series. There are a number of things that we can do to try and improve the energy efficiency of our existing building stock. And one of those things is improving the level of air tightness, which is quite a low cost measure. Another measure we can do is to insulate our homes and one of the best ways we can do that is to externally insulate. There's no disturbance to the inside of the house. All the work takes place on the outside and we're also eliminating and cutting out any thermal bridges. 
In this introduction, we've seen now an overview of the principles of Passive House. We've learned about the importance of facing towards the sun. We've learned about the importance of building fabric, very good insulation, about air tightness. We've also seen the benefits of mechanical ventilation system and the incredible air quality that that provides. And we've also learned about comfort and we've touched upon the retrofit situation. In later series, we'll be talking about all of these topics in much more detail and I look forward to sharing our experience on the Passive House Road with you.